Hello, BookTube. Um, it's late Tuesday, um, well, actually past midnight, actually Wednesday morning uh, here, and I'm still without internet. Uh, I was successful in uploading the tag. It took a long time, and it did eat a lot of my data, So, but I'm going to film uh, hopefully a few more videos in the meantime, and I'll upload them when I can. So, um, and this is back to uh, doing my magazines. Uh, last week, or on Saturday, which didn't go up, I don't think, till Sunday, I described an article out of uh, Current Archaeology. Uh, it was the, uh, uh, what was the article again here? Uh, Rest in Pieces, Exploring Evidence of Bronze Age Curation of the Dead, uh, which I found fascinating. And, um... There's so many things in these magazines that are that are fascinating, the archaeology, or at least fascinating to me. And I'm sure once I get the other history ones that I'm doing, they'll be fascinating as well. The other magazines I'm getting are more current affairs. Uh, it's the same sort of, you know, rebuttal of political, economic uh, things that are, are interesting and should be read and known, but... Um, I think I'm I'm going to sort of stray away from those because they're a bit dry and, to be honest, depressing in these days. Um, so, you know, it's sort of nothing that we uh, don't actually expect, but uh, uh, hence going to these. And there's three articles in this one uh, with regards to uh, the Blitz um, the, during the Second World War. And there's some fascinating things in here, things that... I didn't know, or actually most people didn't know until relatively recently. Um, this The first one is called London Calling, Eco-Archaeology and the Echoes of the Blitz. It's written by Gustav Milne, who is... Let's go to the end here. There's a little uh, bio. or uh, Gustav Milne has been a Museum of London archaeologist since 1973, investigating city waterfront sites and the Roman Basilica. And uh, UCL lecture, University College London lecture since 1991, uh, establishing the Gresham Ship Project, the Thames Discovery Program, uh, sits, sits in, and the Ev Evolutionary Determinants of Health Program. I'm not quite sure what that is, but but yeah, no, it just goes through and, and seeing like what's still there 80, 80 years uh, later. And, you know, he starts out with the normal things that everybody sort of knows, uh, if you don't remember the dates. But you, 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 most people do know that, like, on the 7th of September, 1940, <coughs> the Luftwaffe started a raid on London that followed uh, 57 consecutive days and nights of carpet bombing. And he goes into, you know, other statistics, 30,000 civilian deaths. 50,000 serious injuries to men, women, and children. Many other towns and cities around the UK, Liverpool, Portsmouth, Coventry, Bristol, Bristol, uh, Plymouth, Birmingham, Glasgow, Swansea, Cardiff, and Belfast, to name just a, a few of them, were also hit by bombing campaigns to, to, uh, to destroy ports and factories. And he goes into, um, uh, like, how this was sort of, like, there were her, uh, you know, civil defense plans and a lot of this stuff sort of know people in the UK here are familiar with dad's army, um, that type of thing. And there were the firefighters, the, uh, AARP, uh, air, um, well, I forget, no, a, um, forget what the, uh, uh, they stand for, but yeah, they, they they were sort of the firefighters, and and to, and then there was like engineers that were taken over, uh, civil engineers, uh, that would have been working to build new buildings in London, uh, but they were taken over to, um, basically, um, destroy like once once a bomb has hit, and to you know take down the. Uh, uh, buildings or partial buildings that are still standing to make it a little uh, more safe uh, for one and and to move a lot of the uh, rubble out uh, so they had all sorts of volunteers 
doing the civil um, civil work. Um, and it says, yeah, the Auxiliary Fire Service employed 23,000 part-timers alongside the 2,700 regulars, of which a third uh, were women. And air raid per, uh, precautions, that's the ARP that I was talking about. Uh, later, the Civil Defense Service teams also grew to 1.5 million nationally by... 1940, including 1.3 and a half million volunteers, and it was there was women's volunteer service, um, and like the Home Office in 1939, drew up an initial civil defense plans um, to address the effects of the raids. Uh, uh, sorry, I'm getting really, really uh, running nose. Uh, and yeah, the chief engineer, um, of London city council, uh, Kyle County council, um, you know, used the uh, Royal engineers as well as private engineers to do this. But, you know, all this kind of stuff is sort of, I've read about, I sort of know, and, um, it's sort of stuff that most people sort of know as <coughs> from history. But the one thing that was interesting was, they had a secret sort of group uh, that uh, that uh, did, you know uh, fought for flood prevention because with all the bombs uh, falling, uh, the uh, Thames walls, uh, the Thames River, the River Thames, uh, you know, it, it's it's a lot of. Uh, low lying or below flood line is is London, so any breach of the wall uh, would incur huge flooding. And if that happened during a raid where people were in in um, underground shelters, they would have drowned. It would have you know there would have been a lot of damage. And it says here, so they they had a sort of secret team that would deal with this. Um, what do they call it here? Uh, does he give a name to them? Uh, it's just, it's, I don't think there's a specific name. Uh, but, uh, they went out and worked in secret at night time to repair. Uh, and the reason why it was secret was they didn't want to, uh, well, first alert uh, the Germans that of the danger uh, and devastation that could be caused by a massive breach. So they didn't want that known. And they also didn't want uh, the London public to know how precarious it was. And apparently it says it's uh, the uh, central London was breached uh, more than 120 times. Now, he doesn't go in to say how many of those times were, you know, potential huge or just that it was breached and they were able to patch it up quite quickly and there's there's scenes here where they even put like you know temporary uh with debris i don't know if that can be seen but you can see the debris across uh behind the fence of a bomb site and uh and so i found i found that uh very very interesting and uh something that i never knew about well actually most didn't know about it until about 2016, a plaque has been put up to Sir Thomas Pearson Frank. And other other ones, like the, uh, the bomb sites, obviously they cleaned them up. And then for years after, uh, you know, plant life grew. Uh, a lot of plant life trees started growing throughout. And uh, a lot of them are now covered, uh, like are built over by other offices and other buildings. But there are a few that stayed, uh, that stayed sort of, you know, little parks for people to go to. And uh, with, with even ruins around, here's one. Um, it's St. Uh, Dustin in the east is one of the several ruined London churches damaged during the Blitz, which remains have since been transformed into an urban garden. And let's see, maybe that's better. You see there. 
So you can see the seats, but obviously, like all the greenery there is is if you can see the old the windows and the openings of the church wall. So that was preserved, and it's it's a little area. And then there's some other ones here where these trees survived, uh, with the tops probably blown off, but they they grew back back. They figure because the base is a lot bigger than the uh, tops are, and but all the buildings around it were all destroyed, but those trees have survived and it's it's still kept the park um and then he goes into that uh because there was sort of a dig for britain uh and everybody everybody sort of knows about that that every piece of wasteland or a parks were dug up to to grow vegetables and there's been a sort of a a search on to try to identify where all these places were they know ones that were like you know the uh the moat of the tower tower bridge and so forth and other big parks but even on sort of bomb sites that were cleared they would uh they would grow and here's an example of one that the fi uh, firefighters did there's um uh saint paul's in the background but they don't know exactly where this is and they they have been sort of trying to identify the locations of where all these were um uh, throughout uh throughout london uh which i find kind of interesting and then the next article goes uh they put out a call the uh, current archaeology put out a call uh to museums across london to sort of show their unique uh sort of relics uh artifacts from from uh, the Blitz, the war. And like the first one that's shown here is a rattle. Let's see if I can get that. A rattle that was uh, by the used by the uh, uh, ARP wardens to signal a raid. And uh, another poignant one is uh, this little pile. They're, they're actually pennies. Uh, it was child's uh, coin um, box. And um, the children survived, but the mother was uh, underneath the table, but the mother was buried and killed. And when they went back, the only thing they could really find was this sort of melted together, fused together uh, pennies. Um, and and it's just, yeah, it's just there's all sorts of things. And the one that I found very interesting, too, was, which I wasn't even aware of this, uh, was that uh, it's hard to get it here? Uh, shit. Uh, there we go. It's uh, you know this is this is a propaganda sheet that was dropped by the Luftwaffe. Uh, it was dropped. Uh, propaganda leaf. It was dropped over Swansea in 1941, and it's a last appeal to reason by Hitler, and it basically uh, is uh, the speech describes. The humiliating conditions imposed on Germany following the First World War condemns the Allies as warmongers and includes the dire premonition that this struggle, if it continues, can end only in the complete annihilation of one of, uh, or the other of the two adversities. adversaries. Uh, Mr. Churchill may believe this will be Germany. I know that it will be Britain, as Hitler said. Uh and also, too, like it goes back to a little bit about the green legacy, like the uh, uh, the uh, growing for uh, taking for Britain and the parks, uh, but also too because of the rubble, uh, there were plants that sort of took hold that were sort of rare in London before and are now relatively popular. But it was very popular before, like there was um, uh, there were there previously. Uh, thought as weeds but uh including things like the budlia uh rose bay willow herb and japanese knotweed uh i have no idea what any of these look like to be honest but it's saying that you know some of these were uh the oxford ragwood uh wort came from the slopes of mount edna where the rocky volcanic soils resembled the rubble of a uh, destroyed building so they took hold there when there was just little bits around. Uh, and then the Japanese knotweed, also originally from volcanic soils, uh, took root. Um, so, yeah. And then the third and last one uh, is uh, it's called bleach, uh, 
uh, uh, bleach, ble blitz beach combing. Oh, that was difficult to say. Um, and it's written by Emma Marsh, who's been doing the studies, and it's, it's Liverpool. Uh, Liverpool was the second hit, uh, biggest hit city <coughs> uh, during the Blitz uh, because of the docks and the waterfront. And the whole of the sort of town centre was destroyed utterly. And they took a lot of the rubble, or most of the rubble, and put it to a place called Crosby Beach. And as you can see, it's being eroded now. And it was covered by soil and everything, but it's being eroded. So all these building fragments, it's building fragments, it's metal fragments, it's everything that's sort of mixed up here. Uh, brickwork, uh, there's even teacups, there's, uh, they've even found like bits and pieces of 17th and 18th century porcelain, um, wall panels, all sorts of things that, that uh, Emma... Emma Marsh is studying these and making uh, 3D models of the larger uh, architectural uh, pieces and trying to identify uh, wh what buildings these are from uh, because there's distinctive marks. So, and using Twitter and social media, which, which is a good use of uh, it uh, compared to other uses, uh, I've sent out calls to, to, you know, show this, and uh, people, and some people remember or have photographs of buildings, and they've been ident being able to identify where certain fragments um, that are on this beach, uh, where that building was. Uh, but as as I say, she is concentrating mostly, I think, on the large architectural pieces. But she mentions about the poignant aspect of finding uh, China and uh, these other. Uh, you know, human aspects, uh, things that show that there, it's not just empty buildings. These were, these were buildings that people lived in and there was lots of porcelain and, and that type of thing. And, um, yeah, it's just, and it's just uh, continuing on. And, uh, most people apparently don't know what they're walking over this, all this rubble. There's no signs up. Nobody knows. Uh, she puts out a call, uh, to have signs up too to have people know what, what they're, what they're walking on and what the beach and, and everything is. Um, and also to, for people to send in photographs via Twitter and other social media. So yeah, like that's, I find that much more interesting, uh, than a lot of, of the other articles. Like I, I, I do find the articles interesting. Uh, uh, for for other magazines like the uh, some of the political stuff, but I, I I'm passing over some of them, uh, and reading just only some of the, some, basically I'm reading some of the commentaries more so than anything else, uh, but they're still fascinating in, in of themselves, uh, and uh, and but I think it'll be things like this that I'll concentrate more on, and I'll make uh, specific videos. There is one from the Guardian Weekly that was last week's. Uh, that is on the international uh, brigades that uh, fought in the uh, Civil War. It's an article written by an author who's done a book on this, and it's it's quite fascinating. Uh, he mentions Orwell, but Orwell is just a very small aspect, at least of the article uh, at all. It doesn't really uh, hinge on him, but I'm interested in it because Orwell uh, was there and his homage to Catalonia. So that'll be the next uh, video I do, uh, specifically on articles and I'll try to keep maybe the, um, smaller pieces for my Saturday. I'm still trying to get the hang of this. I'm still trying to get the hang of, of, you know, uh, fitting in all this magazine reading with my, uh, with my book reading. And, and I haven't even got all the magazines yet that are coming. Um, that's for some, well, I think everything's delayed because of lockdowns and so forth. But I'm sure there's going to be lots more interesting stuff to, to go through. Uh, and uh, if you get bored, let me know. <laughs> and or if there's other things you want to, to see or hear, uh, do let me know. Because I'm going to be getting uh, a lot of other magazines. Some of them are only introductory offers. Uh, there's some magazines that I've never seen. So they're introductory offers to see if, I, if I'm interested in keeping them. So far, most of what I'm getting are, are good marks. They're, they're good. 
Um, so I'm, I'm very pleased with it. And I knew current archaeology would be, and I've the other magazine that's uh, the sister magazine to this is current world archaeology. And, um, yeah, I was just going through and just reading up the little bits and pieces that I missed, um, the book reviews and things like that, which are uh, very specialist material. So it's not really uh, probably worth uh, mentioning most of those. But yeah, um, so I'll get this up as soon as possible and um, I'll just continue on and see how it works. Um, I haven't received this as Tuesday. I didn't receive any mail, any post yesterday or today. So hopefully uh, some other magazines will start coming in and periodicals coming in uh, over the next three, four days uh, before Saturday. Fingers crossed. But Thursday here is, is, is lockdown day, especially if it passes in the commons here. And uh, so I'm going to end this now. I'm going to take a look at uh, the polls and the U.S. election. Um, I'm still using my data, so... Uh, off my phone so I, I i take a peek at it every so often it's a little better than when i first looked uh it looks like biden is uh a bit in front at the moment but that can change um so fingers crossed for for the united states take care about tip